Thank you. Uh, does everybody hear me? Great. Um, so, hello everyone. My name is Arnaud Loret. I'm French. I'm an API architect at the Natixis Group, uh, which is a French banking group uh, and a part of the BPCE, uh, another big banking group. Uh, we provide banking services and financial services. Uh, as Daniel said, uh, I'm also known as the API Handyman. You can uh, read my blog and follow me on Twitter. Uh, I run the API Stylebook. Uh, it's a website in which I try to gather uh, all publicly available um, API design guidelines. And I'm also writing uh, a book about API design, and it's called The Design of Everyday APIs, and it has obviously inspired this session. In this session, I would like to show what the design of everyday objects can teach us uh, about the design of APIs regarding their purpose, their usability, and how their design can be constrained. The very first mission of API designers is to ensure that the purpose of the API they design is the good one. Let me introduce the Kitchen Radar 3000. Bringing top-of-the-art military-grade components into your kitchen, the Kitchen Radar 3000 will help you to become the fastest cook in the universe. If you do not believe me, let's see how we can cook a chocolate cake in a few minutes. Put 200 grams of chocolate in uh, 80 grams of butter and three tablespoons sorry, of milk in a glass container. Put the glass container in the kitchen radar, push and hold the magnetron on button for one minute. Take the glass container out of the kitchen radar, add three eggs, 80 grams of sugars, 50 grams of flour, mix well, put it again in the kitchen radar, push and hold the magnetron on button for another eight, uh, six minutes, and you're done. You baked a delicious cake in eight minutes. The kitchen radar is made to eat food at light speed, but it can also defrost food. To defrost food, you need less heating power. As the magnetron uh, heating power cannot be modulated, it has to be turned on and off at a regular pace to generate less heating power. Hopefully, the kitchen radar comes with a very handy eating power cheat sheet in order to help you to find the right pace. So, according to this cheat sheet, we have to hold the magnetron on button for 13 seconds and release it for 13 seconds and so on as long as necessary. It's like playing video games. That's really fun. Well, not at all. The Kitchen Radar 3000 is a terribly designed device. It simply exposes its inner workings through its interface. Therefore, the purpose uh, of the Kitchen Radar does not make any sense for its users. Users don't want to turn a magnetron on, they want to heat food. Another consequence is that uh, its interface is awfully complicated. Users have to hold the button, they have to time themselves, they have to uh, master the rhythm to uh, have the right temperature. And the documentation did not succeed to fix all this mess. It's exactly the same when you design an API. Although an API is an application programming interface allowing software to communicate with each other, it's first and foremost an interface for developers, for people. An API must have a purpose that makes sense for these people. An API must fulfill uh, these people's needs without bothering them uh, with internal concerns. If not, you are designing a kitchen radar API that will be a nightmare to use and to understand. See, a user uh, needs uh, 20 lines of code to use the kitchen radar API, while they need only one to use the microwave of an API and don't even dare to think that the documentation can solve such mess. You'll be greatly disappointed. But even if an API has a clear purpose that makes sense for its users, it does not mean that it will magically be usable. Have you ever feel outrageously smart when using something for the first time? You know when everything is so easy and intuitive that you are able to discover all of an object possibilities by yourself. 
This is possible not only because you are outrageously smart, but also because what you are using has been designed in order to make it totally straightforward and predictable. There are three things to think about to achieve a straightforward design that people will understand instantly. Representations, interactions and flows. What could be this device? With its cryptic levels and numbers, it's impossible to guess its purpose nor how to operate it by just looking at it. What if we change a few things like this? What a surprise, it's an alarm clock. These two devices have exactly the same purpose, but propose different representations of it. Which one do you prefer? The straightforward alarm clock or the quite cryptic womb? What is terrible for an everyday object's usability is as terrible for API's usability. When we design an API, we must take care of the representations we choose. An alarm clock is obviously an alarm clock, while a womb is, well, we don't know. When using an API, uh, users must understand any name at first sight. Who knows how to decipher a unique timestamp, the number of seconds since the 1st uh, January of 1970? Nobody, besides programs. Remember, there are not only programs who use APIs, people use them. Therefore, API users must be able to understand data formats without any effort. When using an alarm clock, who cares about the numbers of seconds until the alarm rings? Nobody. People want to know at which time it will ring. An API must provide data which are relevant for users. Choosing straightforward representation is a good start, but it is only the first step towards straightforward design. We do not just stare at objects or APIs, we also interact with them. Is there something more terrifying than a washing machine's control panel? I don't think so. Some very basic ones are almost impossible to use for mere mortals. You have to choose a program with a cryptic name, a uh, temperature between very cool and very hot, the, f the spin speed, and finally adjust the water level. And after laboriously choose all these parameters, the machine may not start. And of course, it will not tell you why. It may be simply because you forgot to close the door. It will be up to you to find out. And once the problem is solved, the washing machine may start, but will not tell you how long the uh, washing will last. I just wanted to wash my jeans. Why does it have to be so complicated? Fortunately, there are other washing machines which are far more user-friendly. They provide straightforward interactions. A big knob lets you select the type of laundry, like jeans or cotton, and you're done. The machine will choose the clean rinse cycle, water level, water temperature, and spin speed according to the laundry type you selected and the laundry weight given by the weight sensor. You may adjust these parameters if you want, but the configuration made by the machine is accurate in most cases. If you forgot to close the door, a big LCD screen warns you and explicitly tells you that you forgot to close the door. And when the machine starts, it tells you that your clothes will be clean in 45 minutes. Do not let your APIs be like those creepy basic washing machines. Design straightforward API interactions. Only request minimal and straightforward inputs. Avoid requesting thousands of parameters that could be determined on the server side. Avoid just telling, oh, there's a problem but we won't tell you why. Provide informative error feedbacks that actually help to solve the problem. And also provide informative feedback in case of success and avoid the basic, oh, okay, it's done. When we use an object or an API, it's common to chain interactions to achieve our goal. And obviously, any interaction flow must be as straightforward as possible. Let's say you are on the fifth floor of a building, ready to explode and filled with aggressive aliens. To escape, you need to take one of the elevator cabin to the 16th floor, while uh, there, um, a shuttle is waiting for you. If the system is the basic one, there's a single call button. Once you push it, you have to wait, not knowing which elevator cabin will come. 
A bell ring when one of them has finally arrived. You walk in and push the 16th floor button. Unfortunately, this elevator was going down, so you go down to the ground floor, hoping that an aggressive alien would not come in the elevator cabin. And after that, you finally go up to the 16th floor. But it's too late, the building exploded. Hopefully, this elevator system can be improved. To prevent the ground floor error, we can add some LCD screen outside each elevator cabin to show if it goes up or down. It's better, but why stopping an elevator for which goes on from someone who wants to go up? We can replace the single cone button by two up and down ones. Therefore, you can call an, elev an elevator to go up or down and only cabin going in that direction which stop on your floor. It's even better, but you still have to push a second button to tell on which floor you want to go. In some systems, the up and down button has been replaced by an LCD touchscreen. When you want to call the elevator, you just uh, touch the uh, screen button. And then it tells you which elevator can be done, use, and uh, you're done. API interaction flows can be improved using the same principles, improving feedbacks and inputs to prevent errors and minimize the number of steps by aggregating actions. Designing, designing straightforward APIs seems relatively straightforward once you know how to do it, but is there some way to be even more straightforward? Yes, we can create APIs which are so straightforward that users can predict how they work. And a good way to provide a predictable design is to provide a consistent design. The place symbol we were used to see on media players is now used on more and more devices, such as washing machines. And whatever the device, this button has the same meaning. Start what the device is supposed to do. Whatever you see this symbol, you know what it means. Objects sharing common design features have a consistent design, which makes them easier to use because you already know how to use them. To achieve a consistent design, an API must be first consistent with itself. Uh, if you decided that a customer ID was a customer ID, don't dare to call it account ID elsewhere in your API. It might confuse your users. An API should also be consistent with other APIs in your organization, sharing common features or behaviors across APIs such as how users of authenticate or error handling will reduce the learning curve. Once users have learned to use one of your API, they will be able to use the next one without effort. And an API should also be consistent with the rest of the world. There are standards and common practices that you can use in your design. You need a country code, use ISO 4166 standard. You design a REST API, don't dare to use the 200 OK HTTP status code for anything else than a success feedback. If you follow common practices and standards, totally new users will feel like home when they discover your API for the first time and will be able to use it without any effort. Another way of creating a predictable design is to cheat and be able to adapt to users. Two persons of different height can drive the same car because each of them can tune the seat and steering wheel position according to their liking. Providing adoptable API design can be done by providing simple features such as pagination, filtering, and sorting. You can also let people choose between various representations like JSON, CSV, RDF, and even MP3 audio, audio files using content negotiation. If you provide an API worldwide, it would be wise to think about internationalization and localization to provide data with accurate language and accurate units. You may even let people choose exactly the data they want. But be warned that being too much adaptable makes an API complex to use. Users may be lost if you provide too much possibilities. A last way to provide predictable design is to provide a discoverable design. When you read a book, and especially a te technical or practical one, you are usually glad to find a table of content listing available chapters and sections and where they start. APIs can be discoverable just like books. You can provide metadata for pagination, for example. If you design a REST API, you can create an hypermedia API, providing links as metadata to help users browse the API. You can take advantage of the underlying protocol. You can use the option FTTP HTTP method, which tell you which HTTP methods you can use on the resource for REST APIs. But 
focusing on usability is a very good thing. But it must not be done without forgetting that design can be constrained. How people use objects and APIs may affect their design. You do not design a watch the same way if it's a regular watch or a diving watch. Both are made to give time, but a true diving watch will have to deal with some constraints, constraints that do not apply to regular watches. A diving watch must support to be immersed at 100 meters. Uh, its users must be able to read time in total darkness and many other constraints. And all these constraints impact its design. API design can be affected in such ways too. When used in a mobile environment where latency is a key concern, an API shouldn't be too fine-grained. If a mobile application has to chain three API calls to do something, it will have to suffer three times the latency to establish a network connection to the server uh, hosting the API. On a 3G network, it means waiting for 600 milliseconds. That's an eternity. Human brains get bored uh, when something takes more than 500 milliseconds. So such mobile applications problems can be solved by creating coarser grain APIs, but it may be interesting in that case to build dedicated backend for front-end, providing a mobile optimized version of the API, for example. If your API provides information that consumers need to uh, get regularly, they may be tempted to pull on your API and do many unnecessary calls. If you provide a webhook, you can provide them updates when needed. You can also imagine to provide streaming APIs using WebSocket or server send events. It may also make sense sometimes to provide batch or bulk endpoints, allowing your users to send a huge amount of requests in one shot. So, as API designers, we must take care of how the API will be used in order to be sure to provide a design that will really fit user needs. But the constraints are not only on the consumer side. In the first part of this session, I told you mostly that you should focus on the user point of view and forget about what's happening uh, behind the API. Well, it's not entirely true. For example, the QWERTY keyboard layout was invented at the end of the 19th century due to mechanical constraints on typewriter. On a typewriter, characters are mounted on middle arms, and these arms can clash and jam if two neighboring, walls, two neighboring ones sorry, are pressed at the same time. To avoid this problem, commonly used letter pairs like TH or ST in English were placed together uh, so um, there are less jam and clash. The QWERTY design uh, was less user-friendly than an ABCD one uh, at that time, but people could type faster, so it was a reasonable design compromise. And as API designers, we may have to compose with constraints imposed by the underlying implementation and do such design compromises. On very old legacy systems, some scalability issues may force you to limit the numbers of API calls per second. Some performance issues uh, may have more impact on the API design and lead to, lead to the creation of asynchronous APIs, for example, processing uh, video files to detect kittens may take some time, so consumers may send uh, the video with a first request and come back later to get the result of the processing, or the system may, uh, may call them back using a webhook. Some constraints may even turn into a no-go for an API, like if your system is not 24-7, it may not be a good idea to provide API. Of course, with enough time and money, we can solve all of this problem. But we do not live in an ideal world, and we not always have uh, time and money necessary to uh, solve all these problems, so be ready to compose with such constraints. And this is the end. We have covered many topics in less than 20 minutes. What are the main things you should keep in mind to avoid design kitchen radar APIs? Two words. Empathy and context. API design is about these two words, empathy and context. Think about your users. Think about how they will use your API. Think about how your API is built. And most important, be inspired by the design of everyday objects. Thank you. <laughs>